This morning, uh, we'll continue our time of worship together by preparing for the Lord's Supper. So we'll be looking this morning at the first chapter of First Peter, if you'd begin turning there. If you don't have a Bible, some men are going to be coming up and down the aisles. Put your hand in the air, and uh, they will make sure you get one so you can follow along with us this morning. We will be looking primarily at First Peter chapter 1, verses 17 through 19, In a few minutes, we'll drink from a cup and we'll eat a piece of bread as a reminder of the Lord's death. And this time in our service is reserved for those of us who are followers of Christ. Um, If you are not a follower of Jesus, Jesus Christ this morning, my prayer is that you would listen closely as we look together at God's word. Um, But when the trays are passed in front of you, we would just simply ask that you'd pass it to the person next to you. But we're thrilled that you are here today. In our text this morning, Peter is writing to believers of Jesus Christ. Peter's readers have experienced the new birth. They've been placed into Christ by the Holy Spirit and are following Jesus Christ in obedience. But they're experiencing hardship. They've been scattered, slandered, and persecuted by the enemies of Christ and increasingly from the government authorities over them. But Peter called them to fix their hope completely upon the future reality of their imperishable, unfading, undefiled inheritance that was reserved in heaven for them, protected by God through faith. And in verse 16, Peter also has previously instructed these believers, like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves also in all your conduct. In the midst of trials, hostility, and persecution, Peter doesn't tell believers what to say to persecutors to end their hostility and slander, to defend themselves against false accusations and unjust treatment, or to avoid offending the world so as to make their lives more comfortable. Instead, he says, fix your hope on the grace to come and be holy in all your conduct. In our text, in verses 17 through 19, the Lord, through Peter, further describes the type of conduct that can and must, in a believer, strengthen and motivate holiness in the midst of trials. And first, our conduct must be fearful conduct. Let's read verse 17. And if you address as father, the one who impartially judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves in fear during the time of your sojourn. If God is your father, if you are a member of God's family, conduct yourselves in fear until Christ returns again. If we are to be holy in our conduct, we must also be fearful in our conduct. Everything we do must be done fearing the one who judges impartially sin because judgment is coming. The one whom we are called to fear, notice, is God himself. And this fear includes a sober recognition of the consequences of sin, which will one day receive perfect justice from a perfect judge. For the one outside of Christ, this fear should bring a terrifying dread of the coming judgment. But fear and unshakable hope are not in opposition here. For the believer, fear is also a proper motivation to holiness because of what we know to be true. We can be hoping yet fear because the one whom we are to fear is also our father. Look at verse 18. Peter says, conduct yourselves in fear, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold, from your futile conduct inherited from your forefathers, but with precious blood of a lamb, unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. A believer properly fearing God is one who conducts themselves in light of both the certainty and the weighty cost of their redemption. Redemption, which we sang about this morning, speaks of the freedom from slavery secured by a price. Believer, we were once enslaved to sin. Our conduct was 
unholy, empty, futile, and evil, and justly deserve to be judged. But we've been set free from the eternal penalty of our sin and from our present slavery to sin. We deserve God's judgment, but Jesus Christ, right, the perfect, sinless, unblemished lamb of verse 19, the eternal son of God, who in addition to his divine nature as God, took on the nature of his creation, the nature of man, and Christ, spotless from all of eternity, then lived a human life without sin. And because he had no sin of his own, he deserved no judgment from his father, was able to take our own sin upon himself. And he died for us on the cross as that sacrificial lamb to redeem us, to purchase us, to free us from that slavery to sin. And he brought us into his family. He took the punishment we deserved and lavished his grace upon us, which we did not. Because of Christ, we can stand before him when he returns to judge sin. Because he has already paid the penalty of our sin. When our conduct is laid bare before God, it will not be for punishment. But it will be for the rewarding of the conduct that he has worked in us as his children. Believers, confess any sin that you're holding on to this morning. If you're in, if you're in Christ, you're not a slave to it anymore. Right? It's futile. Its pleasures are fleeting. Its promises are empty. You've been set free from it. Christ died to sever you from it. Don't you hold on to it. Right? Christ rised, rose again so that we would have new life. Consider the cost of your redemption. The spotless lamb of God. Fear the one who judges all sin and forsake it. Come before the Lord in fear and trembling, knowing, remembering the cost of your redemption this morning. And as Peter previously wrote, the hope of your inheritance. And enjoy this meal this morning. Enjoy it in anticipation of when we actually get to partake of this very meal with Jesus Christ himself in his kingdom one day. That day is coming. Men, you can come forward and pass the plates. If you are not in Christ, know that Judgment for sin is coming. Please don't leave today without talking to someone about what it means to trust in Christ, to put your faith in Christ, and to be made a member of God's family. To look forward not to terrifying judgment, but to eternal life and eternal inheritance in Christ. Talk to one of the pastors, or you can um, come over to the prayer room after the service um, in the door on my right, and talk to somebody about what it means to put your faith in Christ. Believers, when you are ready, remember and savor the sweet grace of the Lord Jesus Christ in sobriety, in fear, in gratitude, and unshakable hope. And take the elements on your own. Um, In a few minutes, Smelly will come forward and lead us in a time of prayer.